So this is our wall plate timber again, which has now been levelled and lined. And you can see this is the outside top Paris corner. And uh, using the lines rather than the actual edge of the timber, which is a little wainy, I've marked out the um, edge half bridle scarf joint, which we're going to cut on here. And you can see that uh, up here we have a tenon. I've marked out, I've put an indication on there that that's the piece of timber that stays on and these are the bits that get cut off and then um, looking at the edge here you can see that this is where the uh, blade gets cut along this line uh, and down as far as here and then underneath here there's a mark for a mortise to be cut this is where the peg hole goes in on the other part of the joint underneath here and it's all marked off from these lines I've put on I've ignored the way in the edge of the timber so that, that means that when we uh, measure off from the equivalent lines on the other piece of timber the joints should come together nicely so this is the underside of that same timber and you can see the uh, mortise position marked out here there'll be a peg hole going down there uh, this is the piece of the timber that gets removed, uh, which we'll be using that uh, big two-man cross-cut saw to do a series of lines and then chiseling off the waste timber here. Uh, that will produce this um, scarf joint here. And the next job is to mark the same joint in the mirror image of it on the end of our piece of timber, which is our wall plate, which we've got here. So just to recap, we're looking at the west elevation and looking at the joint that's going to be coming about here on this wall plate. So the one we're actually marking out is the piece that runs across here and finishes about here. So that's where our joint is going to come. We've got to bear in mind we've got studs coming in underneath here as well. So uh, we've got to think where they're going to come in relation to our joint. And that tenon that you just marked out, where is that? That's on, on the, the uh, top surface of this one, about here somewhere. Okay. So I've already put some chalk lines on this timber, uh, and so I can use those as reference points. And I have uh, in cut this uh, square using these lines to. Uh, mark a square around and cut it so that I'm happy that I can use the end of the timber as my reference for my uh, marking out my joint. So I'm going to turn the timber over once so that it's sitting the way up that it will actually be in the building. Now we're looking at the top of the timber here the outside of the timber here. Right, so we've got the timber the correct way up now with the outside Paris, the corner here, showed, shown with this mark, so I know where we are. And I can uh, put, well, refer to that so I know that I'm marking this in the correct place. The first thing I want to do is to actually, using the uh, line as a reference position, mark where all the different um, elements are going to get occur. So I can use mark here, and then another one here, and then I'll mark, mark another one down here. So these points that you're marking now, what are they? These refer to the mark? positions for the tenon on the end of the timber and the mortise position on the underside of the timber uh, sorry on the top side of the timber in this particular case we're doing a mirror image of the one we've already done so that um, I can then using the um, chalk line to help me I can square around and uh, reflect those marks all the way around the timber
So using our framing square, we can uh, use that to reflect, draw this line all the way around the timber. Side. shoulder line for the tenon but it's going to be on the underside of the timber so we need to take this right the way around the The, uh, I'm using the chalk line to put my square on and not the actual edge of the timber because it's not necessarily the same depending on how distorted the timber is. So I've marked those around the three sides and now I'm going to, while the timber's this way up, I'm going to mark the mortise which needs to get on the top here. and the chalk line as a measure. Just need to square off the end of that. So there we have our top mortise. I'll just mark the peg hole. Okay, so now we've marked the top of this timber, we're going to look at the side and we know that we're going to, um, we've got our 50mm line there, even though it doesn't, the timber is actually bigger than that, but we are putting our ruler on the 50mm mark and uh, coming down what should be half the depth of the timber, so that should be, uh, we'll be marking this at Well, that's going to give us our line for us. Uh, parts of this graph come together. do now is just indicate which bits are coming off. Do some hashes on there. So that we're quite clear with what we're doing. And we'll do the same on the other side for 
Right, I'm going to turn the timber over now because I've finished marking off what I can from this side. Turn it once. And then each end across. Now I'll turn it over again so it ends up now sitting upside down. So I can mark my shoulders right the way across here. Which I can just do off the lines I've already done down the side. tenon which is going to sit on here again off my chalk line. The tenon is going to be two inches or 50 mil. And on there so I know my own reference that that's what stays on that's what comes off so that's the whole joint marked out now all we've got to do is uh, cut it <laughs> <laughs> 